You're watching Tag TV. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends. I am so deeply honored uh, to be here this afternoon, to be back in Milton, and to look out at an audience to see so many uh, new friends, for sure, but most importantly, lots of familiar friends, uh, women and men that I've had the chance to meet and being very, very honored to meet over the course of the last 12 months on this leadership journey that I have been embarked upon. And of course, I want to begin by thanking Ravia and Azim for their support and also for inviting me into their lovely, all of us, uh, into their lovely home this afternoon for this discussion. And Ravia is right. I can actually still recall that very first time we met in 2014. I'm not going to suggest I still have the scars from all of her tough questions, but it's entirely possible that that's the case. All kidding aside, I was very struck in that moment by the kind of passion and the sense that she had as it relates to making sure that our fastest growing communities, including Milton and Brampton and Mississauga and Vaughan and so many more, have the kinds of investments that they need to grow in the right way and that communities feel like they have governments both locally and regionally, provincially and nationally that are truly on their side. So to Ravia and to Azim, I want to thank you so much for your support and your friendship and for having us here today. I also want to acknowledge we're here today with my dear friend, her, she's, she's shaking her head at me right now, but Harinder Mali and I served in the legislature together. Harinder was the MPP for Brampton and a cabinet colleague. And I will also say that Harinder, uh, not only is a dear friend, she's also someone who was never at all concerned about making sure that her community, Brampton and others were represented at the centers of power. I want to thank you, Harinder, for being here and for your support. So I have been on this campaign journey now for just a little bit more than 12 months. And I will talk in just a second about the issues and the ideas that are most important to me in terms of the values that are at the very foundation of why I'm running. But there's something that I want to say just for a quick second about what the rest of this journey looks like. Not just for me, but for all of the candidates who are running. So in two weeks, two weeks from this weekend, on February 8th and 9th, in every riding across Ontario, Liberal members who are eligible to vote, including many of you here in this room, will have the chance to cast a ballot directly for leader, and then of course to choose the 16 women and men who will go to the convention in Mississauga on March the 6th and 7th in order to cast the ultimate ballot, choose our new leader, and then we can emerge from that convention united and ready to take on Doug Ford and win. But here's, absolutely, yes, Doug Ford and win, we can clap for that, we can clap for that. I just want to say to those individuals who are eligible to vote, and frankly to all of you, it is true that my campaign, I personally, have been honored to have and encouraged to have such incredible support from people in this room and people across Ontario. And when you look at all of the traditional ways that we measure progress or success in politics and in elections, yes, it's true, my campaign, thanks to your help, is doing well. We have collectively... We, we have collectively, thanks to your support, raised more money than any other leadership candidate. Yeah. We have yeah. 26,000 people, new people, joined the Ontario Liberal Party because of leadership, and nearly 15,000 of those 26,000 joined because of the effort that my campaign brought to this undertaking. Thank you for that. And just the other day, it was announced by the party that somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000, 5,200 women and men have come forward to stand as delegates to go to the convention. And of those, about 2,600 are supporting me. I want to stress, I will forever be grateful to every single individual here in Milton and across Ontario who has stood alongside me through this journey to help us achieve what we have achieved so far. But, and this is the most important thing for all of us to remember, I have been involved in election campaigns, nominations, and leaderships since I was 15 years old. I'm 46 today. That means that 75% of my time on this planet, I've been involved in campaigns. And I need each and every one of you, and all your friends, and your entire network, and every single person that you encouraged and successfully got to join our party, I need everyone to remember. Until the votes are cast, 
And until those votes in the ballot boxes are counted, the numbers don't matter. If I've learned anything in my 31 years being active as a liberal, it's that complacency is deadly. And overconfidence is fatal. I have had success in this campaign. We have had success in this campaign for one reason. Because from the day that we started, as a team, all of you, with me, we've never stopped. We have been absolutely relentless. When I've been tired, in moments when I couldn't find some kind of coffee, I've thought about you. I've thought about the energy that you give to me. Because through, all, through it all, you've never let me down. So in these next two weeks, regardless of what you see on social media, regardless of the attacks and criticisms that may or may not be leveled against me and against our team, ignore it. It's a purposeful distraction from people, mostly conservatives, mostly people close to Doug Ford, who do not want a united and rebuilt Ontario Liberal Party because they fear the kind of progress that we can deliver. I need you to stay focused. You have literally been the team on whose shoulders I have stood for a year. And I need you to continue to stand alongside me for the next two weeks, for the next six weeks. Make sure every single eligible friend, family member, and person in your network votes. Then we get to the convention, then we come out of the convention, and we're ready for an election campaign that we need to win. Now, throughout this campaign, I have talked a lot about the need to win the election in 2022. Let me just point out that from the day we leave the convention center in Mississauga on March the 7th, there are only 26 months until the next campaign begins here in Ontario. Now, some people think that I only talk about the election being important because I just want to win. Well, let me say two things. First of all, I've won things in my life and I've lost things. Winning's a heck of a lot better than losing. But I don't just want us to win the next election because I like the statistics or because I want a better record. I want us to win. We need to win the next election because the stakes are too high in this province to let Doug Ford have four more years. We see it in every single decision that he and his friends are making at Queen's Park on a regular basis. Cuts to public education, cuts to public health care, no plan whatsoever to confront the climate crisis, cuts to the most vulnerable, no significant investments in transportation, fighting with municipal partners instead of working closely in partnership. All of that, and most of all, rewarding their close friends instead of focusing on the 15 million people who call this province home. Doug Ford and his friends are taking our province badly off track. If you believe, like I do, that we need a public education system in grade schools, in high schools, in college and university that actually works for the people, that actually permits young women and men to go as far in life as their talent and their effort will take them, and not simply as far as their bank account will take them, we need to win the next election and move forward in the right way. If you believe in fast-growing communities like Milton, like Brampton, like Mississauga, like Vaughan, that the people who live in this province deserve health care that actually means they're getting the care they need, that they're at the center of the decision-making process, and that their government of Queen's Park is not ignoring their health care crisis, then we need to be dug forward and get the province moving in the right direction. If you know, you know in your heart that Milton needs to have more GO train service, if you know in your heart that we need to continue to invest in highways and widen those highways where and when it makes sense, if you know, as I said a second ago, that we need a real plan to confront the climate emergency, that's not simply a problem for Ontario, but is a problem for the world. Most importantly, if you believe in an economy like I do, where we create prosperity collectively because we support our entrepreneurs, and when those entrepreneurs are successful, we celebrate and honor their success. But when we as Ontarians create that prosperity, it's broadly shared, so nobody's left behind. 
If you believe in those things and so much more, if you are focused like I am on progress, then you know we need to win the next election. It is a necessary precondition to get Doug Ford out of office. Ontario Liberals can get that job done. With your help, we will get it done. In every corner of this province as I've toured, and I promise I'll stop talking shortly. I talk a lot. I talk a lot. Are you ready? Are you? So, in every corner of this province, I have been asked by almost every liberal that I've met, why are you running? Why do you think you're the best person for the job? Let me just say there are six people running in this race. I know the other five. The, two of the other five I served with in the legislature. The other ones that I didn't serve with, I've gotten to know over the course of this leadership campaign. I said earlier I've been in the party for a long time. Can I just tell each and every one of you, we are truly blessed as Ontario Liberals because the field of candidates running is absolutely outstanding. I am a competitive person, and so yes, of course, I want to win this leadership campaign, and I'll keep working hard to do so. But for me, the most important thing is that we come through the convention itself and that we are united as a political family. That regardless of who wins, and I say this openly, publicly, and on the record, regardless of who wins, because winning the next election so that we can deliver a better Ontario is the critical thing, I will serve alongside the new leader if it's not me. I will do whatever I can do. It's what I've done for 31 years. If for whatever reason in its wisdom our party chooses someone else, I'm not going anywhere. But I guarantee Doug Ford's going to go somewhere and it's not to another election win. Why am I running in this race? It's pretty easy for me. It's pretty straightforward. My wife and I are raising two young kids at home. Our daughters are 12 and 8. I think about our 12-year-old daughter in particular. Actually, I think about them both all the time. But on this note, when I think about education, I think in particular about our 12-year-old. She's in grade 7 right now. And if you think about the path forward for her, and you think about the electoral calendar, with our next election in Ontario starting in May of 2022, it becomes apparent pretty quickly that before we get a chance as Ontarians, not just Ontario Liberals, but as Ontarians, to show Doug Ford the door, my daughter is to accept that my daughters and the millions of others like them across this province should have less opportunity than I had a generation ago because Doug Ford has the wrong priorities. You're watching Tag TV.